Okay. Welcome to our Bible study beside Henson Creek. There's a little more water in it, so it's a little bit more musical today. Okay, well, let's begin with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the music in the creek. Thank you for sending birds to sing. Father, thank you that in this dark world you still give us so many blessings. In this miserable world you still show us many evidences of your love. We're asking now that you would speak to us through your word, that you would teach us. We're asking that you would send the Holy Spirit. We're asking that you would mold us and shape us into all that you want us to be. We do ask also for the protection of your angels. You would bind Satan and his evil angels that this message could go into the hearts and the minds of those that need it. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua, amen. <clears throat> it's been raining a lot today, and we are very grateful that the Lord gave us an opening in the rain so that we can do this outside. We're very grateful for that. We're grateful that he's in control of the weather. <coughs> okay, we are on day number six of our family Bible lesson, year one. We're in quarter two on lesson four. And we will uh, get our first letters out again. For those that still need them. Who would like to try it with the first letters? Or without? Without. You want to try it without? Yeah. Okay. Here. <clears throat> Brother Jonah is going to do the do it without the letters. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of a brightness. Psalm 143.10. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, Stephanie's turn with no, not looking at the first letters. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Psalm 143.10. Good. Woo! <laughs> Good job. <clears throat> All right. Do thy will, for thou art my God. Thou. Thy. I don't know. This is the first time. I only heard them say it. <laughs> Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy thou. Thy spirit. spirit thy is spirit good. is good. Lead me into the the something the land the land of, of uprightness. Yes, is that right? Yes. Ooh. Psalms. Oh, what? Psalms, Psalms one forty three oh. ten. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. Not Psalms. Psalm. Okay. Wow, what a blessing. Our Heavenly Father is giving us some sunshine. The first time, first time we've had sunshine all day long. <clears throat> okay. All right, I'll do it without looking at the letters. <clears throat> Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Psalms 140, <coughs> Psalm 143, verse 10. Psalm 143, verse 10. So when you read more than one chapter of Psalms, you can say, I have read some Psalms from the book of Psalm. <laughs> but uh, if you just read one verse, then it's Psalm. Or one chapter, it's just Psalm. Psalm chapter 143. 
but I, I forget that. I've been in the habit of saying Psalms chapter 91 or Psalms 143. So we're my brothers and sisters in Christ are helping me break that habit to be more correct. So is the psalm reference to per chapter or per verse? Per chapter. Mm. So we couldn't really call it psalm. We have to call it like a fraction of psalm because it's just a verse, right? <laughs> but it's from one <laughs> psalm. <laughs> one psalm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thought you might want one there, Justin. Yeah, well. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter 37. And we're going to be looking at verses 28 through 36. Genesis 37, verse 28. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. <clears throat> and they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes, or he tore his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father, and said, This we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it, and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins <clears throat> and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. <clears throat> Joseph was taken up out of the pit and sold to the Midianites for twenty pieces of silver. He appealed to one and another of his brothers but in vain they let the Midianite merchants take their brother Joseph. When Reuben returned to the pit, he was alarmed when he did not find Joseph. He was too late. He should have never allowed his brothers to treat Joseph in such a thoughtless way or to have put him in a pit. He had been pretending to go along with his brother's plans. That was a type of lying that God could not bless.
he didn't have the courage to stand up and stand out and say, no, this is wrong. We shouldn't put him in this pit. He doesn't deserve this. So he appeared to agree with his brother's plan, but inwardly he wanted to save his brother Joseph. May God give us courage to stand up and stand out and speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. The brothers killed a goat and dipped Joseph's torn coat of many colors into the blood. They carried the bloody garment to their father Jacob. They lied, saying a wild animal had devoured him. We are told that Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. He would not be comforted. The Midianites sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh in Egypt. How thoughtless the brothers were to Joseph and to their father Jacob. What sorrow we can bring upon others by our own thoughtless deeds. We can learn from this Bible lesson and practice being thoughtful. Okay, we have a few review questions. Why was Joseph taken out of the pit? So he could be sold into slavery. Mm. Mm. And how much did they sell Joseph for? 20 pieces of silver. Mm. And who remembers how much Jesus was sold for? Ooh, I forget. Wasn't it 20 pieces? It was also 20 pieces. Wasn't it? No, okay, then I don't know. My memory is 30 pieces. Uh, we have a scripture reference for Matthew 26, 15. So we will uh, check and see if my memory is correct. <clears throat> Gen uh, excuse me, Matthew. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 15. Matthew 26, verse 15. And said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. Barely more than a slave. Wow. Explain what happened when Reuben came back to the pit and he found that Joseph was not there. Uh, well, he was hoping to rescue Joseph and found he wasn't there, so he obviously was very upset. And he tore his clothes up mm. and uh, felt pretty awful about that. Mm. Wow, he was all torn up, all sad about that. Mm. He ripped up his clothes, he was so distraught. What plan did Joseph's brothers carry out in order to conceal the truth about what really had happened to Joseph? They, uh, they killed a kid and used the blood to stain the coat, mm -hmm. the coat of many colors that his dad had given to him as a gift and uh, brought it back to the dad. So he, uh, he thought that Joseph had been eaten up by a beast. Mm. Yes. They took a baby goat, also known as a kid, and they killed it. And they ripped up Joseph's coat to make it look like a wild animal had destroyed him. But they were the ones that had destroyed Joseph's future in his life. <clears throat> And it would appear that, yes, they had destroyed Joseph, Joseph's future and his life. And it may appear to you like someone has destroyed your life. But God was with Joseph. And if you feel <clears throat> like someone has destroyed you, maybe they have. Remember Joseph. 
it would appear that, yes, his life was destroyed forever, but God was with him. Joseph trusted that in his time, in God's time, in his way, he would be delivered. He would be restored. And it was years that God did restore to Joseph what was lost, what was taken away from him. How did Joseph's father, Jacob, respond to the news of Joseph's death or the lie that was given to him um, that he believed? Well, obviously, he was very distraught. He also tore his clothes off, and um, then he put on a loincloth in as uh, part of his mourning process, and he mourned for a long time. Mm. Wow. It's amazing what, what envy led those brothers to do, both to their brother and to their father. Mm. Genesis chapter 37 and verse 36. And the Midianites sold him unto, into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, and a captain of the guard. So what happened to Joseph after he was brought into Egypt? Um, he got sold into slavery to a representative of uh, Pharaoh's. Mm. He was a soldier of the guard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know what happens after that, but i got to be careful how much I say. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's... <clears throat> you definitely answered the question. <laughs> yes, he was sold to Potiphar. So I wonder why they decided to take it a step further and to dip his coat in blood and like make the lie worse to his father instead of possibly letting his father wonder where he was and what happened to him. And like, did they think that was more merciful to tell their father that he died? And then if Joseph was just missing, then his father could have been praying for him and had hoped that one day he would see him again, but they took that away from mm. their father. So what they should have done was been honest, but if they weren't going to be honest, why did they mm -hmm. decide to go to that length? Mm -hmm. They probably knew that if they would report that Joseph was missing, he would assign them to go search for their brother. And they knew that would be a fruitless search, and they didn't want to go and search for him acting like they're going to find him when they knew that he went to Egypt. That would be my guess. Yeah. And I'm surprised that Reuben all these years never came clean because he was the one that wanted to preserve Joseph's life and for them to all keep this secret. They had to have come to an agreement like this is what we're going to tell our dad and none of us are ever going to say anything. Hmm. Mm. Wow. He might have been afraid of him. They were willing to kill him at first, and then they said, no, let's sell him instead so we can get something out of it. They might, mm -hmm. He might have been possibly afraid of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> that may be that if the brothers were willing to kill Joseph, if I had it in their heart to kill Joseph, it would make sense that they would have been... Uh, They, they probably would have been wanting to kill Reuben if he would tell the truth, to try to conceal the lie. <clears throat> That's how uh, deception works. You tell the lie, and then you have to keep the lie believed. And if you have to take people out in order for the lie to stand, you do it. That's unfortunately 
one one lie can lead to more and more and more. Okay, we, go, we are going to learn more about the wings of an insect. Scientists think that dragonflies are the fastest flying insects. It is estimated that they fly about 60 miles or 97 kilometers per hour. Wow. Butterflies and locusts can fly uninterrupted uninterrupted for a distance of 100 miles or 160 kilometers. They can carry enough food energy in their bodies to fly this distance. Bees can only fly for about 15 minutes on their body's fuel. Wow. The quickness of these little insects reminds us of how fast decisions are made and how quickly the terrible consequences follow that go with wrong decisions. Sometimes a quick flying bee will fly into the mouth of a bear and is eaten. The quick decision to sell Joseph brought sorrow upon the father and caused the brothers to add yet another sin to what they already had. They now added thoughtlessness, deceit, and lying to their jealousy and unkindness. The young nymphs of dragonflies are hatched and live underwater until the time comes for them to crawl up out of the water, maybe on a plant stem, and go through a process called metamorphosis. The nymph makes some humping movements that cause the skin to split up the back, and a beautiful winged creature comes out. You might like to think of Joseph coming up out of the pit as a dragonfly nymph comes up out of the water. Just like the dragonfly nymph lost his former covering, so Joseph's beautiful coat was torn and taken from him. But he developed a new and more mature relationship with God on account of this experience. It was like his spiritual wings emerged and he was ready to go anywhere or be anything God wanted him to be. His character was maturing into a beautiful specimen like that of the dragonfly nymph. So Joseph could have been thrown in the pit and then pulled out and thought, my life is ruined. He would have, could have thought, what good is there to even try to live? Being a slave is worse than death. How can I bear this? He could have given up hope. He could have given up. He could have thought, I won't try to serve Potiphar. I'll just give up. Mentally, he could have given up. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do it. He realized that as bad as his circumstances were, he still had a heavenly father that was alive and ruled, overruled and cared for him. He realized that he still had a purpose even though his present reality was so horrible. His faith, which was a gift that he had received from his heavenly father. This faith helped him to see beyond his present reality, to see something better that he knew that God had in store for him. And rather than giving up faith in God's goodness, he could have thought, well, if God loved me, he wouldn't allow me to go through this. If God cares for me, he wouldn't allow me to go through this. Rather than allowing himself to doubt, he chose to believe that his heavenly father still had a plan and a purpose for him. And it's clear from Joseph's actions that he chose to do his very best in the situation that he was in. And by doing his best, we see later in the story how 
Potiphar trusted Joseph with everything in his house. Joseph was trustworthy because he trusted that God was with him, because he trusted that God would want him to do his very best. Even though he wasn't earning money, even though he was a slave, he wanted to be the best that he could be, even if it was a slave. And so he was trusted as more than just a slave that was told, do this and do that and do this. He was trusted and favored above that. <clears throat> so you may, in your life, be tempted with this same temptation as Joseph did. You may think that your life is ruined and you may mentally want to give up. Don't give up. Be like Joseph. Be the best you can be with, other, with whatever circumstances that you have been placed in. Grow where you are planted, even if you're sent to a desert like Joseph. Joseph was like a watered garden. He received from the Holy Spirit the strength that he needed. He received from the Holy Spirit the hope that he needed. Circumstances did not break him. He rose above circumstances. Will you let the discouraging circumstances break you? Or will you in God's strength rise above the discouraging circumstances and you break that down? You be all that God wants you to be. What Joseph did is an example for you and for me that we will not allow discouragement to break us down mentally. But we will remember, we will know that our Heavenly Father is still alive. He still has a purpose. And God used Joseph. Not only did he rise up in that household of Potiphar, but later he rose up within that prison. And then later he rose up in the kingdom and he was second only in command to the Pharaoh himself. And God used him to save hundreds of thousands of lives because God gave him prophetic knowledge of the famine that was coming. And God gave Joseph wisdom to counsel the Pharaoh of Egypt, of how to, to store, store the grain, how to prepare. Joseph would have never dreamed that by going to be a slave, worse than death, that God could bring him up to such a high level that he could save not only his own family, but countless other people. You may be in a dark, horrible situation right now, and you may never dream that God could bring anything good out of it. But if He did it for Joseph, remember, He can do it for you too. Amen. It says, The quickness of these little insects remind us of how fast decisions are made and how quickly the terrible consequences follow that go with the wrong decisions. So I just wanted to point out that we need to be taking time and thinking things through before we make decisions. Mm. Because when we make decisions quickly, like usually out of <coughs> anger, so this person did this to me, so I'm going to do this, um, you usually have negative consequences for mm -hmm. that. So just take time and think things through and make sure you're making the right decision before you make the decision. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And get a sign if you need to. <laughs> and get a sign if you need to. Yes. Ask for your Heavenly Father to make it very clear what you are supposed to do. Just like the dragonfly nymph lost his former covering, so Joseph's beautiful coat was torn and taken from him. But he developed a new and more mature relationship with God on account of this experience. It was like his spiritual wings emerged and he was ready to go anywhere or be anything God wanted him to be. His character was maturing into a beautiful specimen like that of the dragonfly nymph. As you work together as a family, or as you work together with your spouse, 
discuss important decisions together and do not rush into them. We are encouraged to look for insects and learn to identify them. Catch a bee, a dragonfly, or butterfly in a jar for observation of their wings. Be careful not to get stung by the bee and be very gentle with butterflies, moths, or dragonflies. They can be damaged very easily. <clears throat> then his thoughts, Joseph's thoughts, turned to his father's God as he was being carried away as a slave to Egypt. His thoughts turned to his father's God. In his childhood, he had been taught to love and fear him. Often in his father's tent, he had listened to the story of the vision that Jacob saw as he fled from his home, an exile and a fugitive. He had been told of the Lord's promises to Jacob and how they had been fulfilled, how in the hour of need, the angels of God had come to instruct, comfort, and protect him. And he had learned of the love of God in providing for men a Redeemer. Now all these precious lessons came vividly before him. Joseph believed that the God of his fathers would be his God. He then and there gave himself fully to the Lord. And he prayed that the keeper of Israel would be with him in his land of exile. His soul thrilled with the high resolve to prove himself true to God. Under all circumstances to act as become a subject of the King of Heaven. He would serve the Lord with an undivided heart. He would meet the rituals of his lot with fortitude and perform every duty with fidelity. One day's experience had been the turning point in Joseph's life. Its terrible calamity had transformed him from a petted child to a man thoughtful, courageous, and self-possessed. You may be in a trial and think, well, I wasn't raised like Joseph was, so how can I go through this trial like he did? But you can turn to the Lord now, and That's you can right. make changes now, and believe that God will help you. Yes. Yes. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can be your God too. Yes. So even if your parents have not served the Lord, you can. Yes. Remember Ruth. She was with her mother-in-law and her mother-in-law said, you go home, Ruth. Go back to your own people. Go to your Moabite people. And maybe you'll find a husband to take care of you since my son has died. And remember what she said. Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God my God so Ruth chose the God of Israel to be her God and you can choose too you may have been raised as a heathen or as a Buddhist or as a Muslim or as an atheist or as an agnostic or as a Hindu or as an animist or as a spiritualist you may have been raised in that way, but just like Ruth chose, she chose Israel's God to be her God. 
you can do that too. There is no God like Jehovah. No God. <laughs> All the other ones cannot compare to the one true God of heaven. Children, make your mother happy. Make her sing instead of sigh. For the mournful hour of parting may be very, very nigh. Children, make your mother happy. Many griefs she has to bear, and she wearies neath her burdens. Can you not those burdens share? Children, make your mother happy. Prompt obedience cheers the heart, while a willful disobedience pierces like a poison dart. Children, make your mother happy. On her brow the lines of care deepen daily. Don't you see them? While your own are smooth and fair. Oh, begin today, dear children. Listen when dear mother speaks. Render quick and sweet obedience. For your highest good she seeks. Loves you better than all others. For your sake herself denies. She is patient, prayerful, tender, gentle, thoughtful, true, and wise. <clears throat> I remember on Sabbath afternoons when we lived in the town, and we didn't live in surroundings like this, and my mom wanted to take a nap, but I wanted to go exploring out in the bush, in the desert. And we were in Colorado. So my mom would take me and we would go exploring, go on adventures. She denied herself of the plans or the nap that she wanted. And instead she took me out in nature. And I'm very, very grateful. I saw my mom deny herself of what she may have wanted or needed for us, her children. Yes, children, do what you can do to bear the load that your mom carries. Tell your mom what you appreciate about her. Do what you can do to lighten her load. Mothers carry such a big burden. Make sure you take some time to appreciate your mother and express that to her. Even if you're all grown up, call up your mom and tell her, what you appreciate about her. Following Christ is a life of gratitude. You're grateful for Him and you're grateful for the people that He's put in your life. All right, anything else before we pray and close? All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you are with Joseph in his time of distress and separation. And Father, we, many of us, are faced with horrible circumstances as, as well. Help us like Joseph did to remember that you are our God and that through you did not promise to take us away from all our trials, but you promised to be with us in our trials. And so we thank you that you are with us. Forgive us for the times where we doubted and when we didn't believe that you are with us. Please, Father, give us more of this gift called faith that we could see beyond our present pain and our pro present problems to see what you're going to do in and through us in the future. We thank you. We ask for your blessing on each one of us here and those that are watching. We ask in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen.